Okay, you guys, we are going uh, for round two of attempting to make this video. I have Easter Halo here with me. He is a very good boy. He's a little bitey, but he's sweet. He's a good boy. Okay. He knocked the phone down that I'm filming on um, last time we were doing this, and it was very, very rambly, so I decided might as well just go ahead and start again. So my name is Evan and I offer minimizing and decluttering services um, in person and virtually with my business, 49 Things Minimalism and Decluttering. So one of my favorite methods for decluttering or for actually getting items out of my house is using my local Buy Nothing Project group on Facebook. Um, I am also an admin for the group. I really love running the group. And I first started to think about making this video last night to share with the group. Um, to tell everyone my method for handling picking up gifts because we've kind of run into some snags lately either with people um you know not showing up when they said they would to pick things up or with certain people becoming disgruntled because they were told they could have an item and then it was given away to somebody else. So um, the main thing, if there was one single detail that I know um, cuts down or eliminates both of these problems, that is to set a firm and specific time for picking up. Um, and what I wanted to make this video about today is explaining the process that I use for handling my pickups for my gifts. Um, I love gifting in my Buy Nothing group because the items go directly to someone who needs that specific thing and they don't have to go to a thrift store and buy it. And also I love it because I don't have to get into my car and go drop stuff off at the thrift store. I have a little girl when I first started, when I first joined the Buy Nothing group, um, well, before that, I had given things away for free on Facebook Marketplace, um, which is, you know, similar, but it doesn't have, like, the community aspect that the Buy Nothing group does. Um, but the process is somewhat similar. Um, but the thing I love about that is when my daughter was a baby, she did not like being in the car at all. She would, like cry and cry and be very unhappy. Um, so putting her into the car was something I really tried to avoid, especially if I was by myself. Um, and then also when she got older, even if um, she was to the age where she wasn't so upset with being in the car for short trips, and I do specify short, um, even if she, you know, didn't mind actually being in the car, she didn't like to get dressed and do all the things that it takes to get out of the door. So anyway, my point in saying all of this is that I loved that I could just set my things out and someone would come and take them away and I didn't have to get in the car and go anywhere. So I'm going to try to be as concise as possible to describe the process that I use 
for handling pickups when I give a gift. Um, because if you participate in a buy nothing group or if you sell things on Facebook Marketplace or give things away for free, you will know that people not showing up when they said they would or when they said they were interested in an item is, you know, it's, it's, um, it's just something that kind of goes along with the territory. So through a lot of experience, I came up with this method that really, really cuts down on people flaking out for picking up their stuff. Um, uh, cuts down on people, you know, doing no-shows, as we call them, in our group. Um, and then if someone happens to not show up when they said the would, you can easily move on to someone else without kind of feeling like you're caught up in this gray area where you have to wait for this person or having the concern that this person already has my address and they might come to my house knocking on my door being like, hey, where's the free such and such that you said I could have? And you're like, oh yeah, well, you never showed up and I gave it to somebody else. And then you're in kind of like an awkward situation that nobody wants to deal with. And luckily, knock on wood, um, <laughs> that situation has never happened to me before, but I was very kind of, um, I felt like it was a very good possibility that there was just like potential for that happening. So I'm like, I was like, how can I make sure that I'm not put in this situation and I don't have to deal with that? Because I certainly did not want to. So did I say this already in this video? I don't know. It might have been the first one. But the, um, the most important thing and the thing that I stress to people is when you are giving a gift for free or when you are the person going to pick up the item, set a time. This is going to cut down on so many issues. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about my process. So we'll just pretend um, let's say I have a beautiful black sweater that I'm gonna gift in the Buy Nothing group. Um, and a whole bunch of people commented on it and they're like, oh, it's so beautiful, I want it for this, da 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 da. You know, um, and I got some nice comments that say why people are interested in the item, not just, hey, I want that or I'm interested in that. Um, so usually, now, of course, okay, this, oh, cat, cat problems. He might come knock the whole phone over all over again. So personally, when I put a gift, I'm extremely impatient. I will openly admit that. I don't need to pretend that that's anything other than the truth because I am extremely, extremely impatient. And when I'm decluttering, I want that stuff out of my house like yesterday. So I will usually include in my original post um, something along the lines of prefer quick pickup or fast pickup needed or something like that. And then in my original post, I also include um, a landmark so that people can just look at the post. They don't have to ask in the comments or wait for me to message them to see what area I'm in. Um, we have a church nearby that I use the name of the church. And you know, if people are paying attention and they want to see, they're not familiar with it. They want to see how far away it is from them. They can just go ahead and Google the church to see if it's worth the trip. Um, you know, if they want to travel that distance and stuff like that and how long it's going to take. So I guess those would be my first two tips. Um, in the actual body of your post, include a searchable landmark 
that people can see what the distance is for where you are, like in relation to wherever they're gonna be coming from and how long it's gonna take to get to you. And then include some kind of information about, you know, if you don't care, if, if you're willing to hold the item until you find just the right person, um, you know, include some type of information about like your time frame for wanting to get it gone. Some people will make a post um, you know, in the middle of the week, but they're not actually going to be available until the weekend to be able to give it to someone. So say they post on Tuesday and they say, need this picked up on Saturday or Sunday. If you have something specific like that, as far as a time frame for you needing the item picked up, include that in your original post because then you don't have to do it individually in the comments or individually in the messages. Um, so, okay, so that's the first tip. The second tip is, so people will go in and they'll comment. Um, I just try, based off of people's comments, I try to feel people out for who I feel like, um, has the ability to follow instructions because I feel like those people are going to be the least flaky. Um, so if I said in my post, like to include something specific in the comments, I'll look for people who did that because that shows me that they probably have a good they probably have the best chance of like actually following through. So I'll go into my comments section. I'll, I'll choose a few people to message, um, or I'll choose a few people to invite to message me because that's how we do it in our group. There are no, um, there's no private messaging allowed without someone being invited to do so. So, so I'll go down there and I'll say, okay, message me, you're welcome to message me, blah, 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 like replying to comments. And I will do that to maybe two or three people. Um, now that is not a guarantee that you were going to get the item just because I said to message me. So I'll go down, I will um, tell people, I will respond to their comments and say, okay, message me. Okay, so if I say I, say I comment back to four people and say message me. Um, now I don't necessarily do first come first serve, but I am looking for the person who can actually show up at my house, usually the fastest to pick up. With first come first serve, I feel like that is more like the first person to comment gets it but with me I um I usually do the first person who is either going to set a firm time with me for pickup that works for my schedule or um the first person who can actually get to my house so um say I invite four people to send me a message <laughs> And then one person actually messages me, okay? And they say, hey, I'm really interested in the black sweater. Um, when can I come pick it up? I will usually tell them the time frame that I'm going to be available. I'll say, um, like, uh, anytime between 11 a.m. and 8 p.m. But this is the important part. I will ask them. So I will give them like my time frame that I'm okay with. But the important part is I say, when would you like to come? So I'm giving them the option to tell me a time that's actually going to work for their schedule. Um, so say they say, I would like to come today at four o'clock. I'm like, okay, that works for me. Let's do it. And then I'll say, 
message me between 3.30 and 4 for my address because I do not give my address out until somebody tells me that they are on the way. That is a mistake. That is a very big mistake that I see a lot within the group. People will put their address, they might even put it like in the original post, they might put it in their comments, or you know, they'll send it early on in the messaging process. And then the person who has your address, they're like, oh, okay, well this person told me I could have it. I have their address so I can go at my convenience. I don't need to have any kind of urgency to actually go there and pick it up. Um, they're going to hold it for me. They promised it to me, blah, blah, blah. That is not how I do it. That is not how I recommend that anybody do it. Um, set a firm time and do not give your address until they tell you that they are like leaving their house, pulling out of their driveway, leaving work, whatever. Now you do have to, you know, if I know, okay, somebody's coming to pick up at four o'clock today, I need to be sure that between like 3.30, 4 o'clock that I'm checking my phone to see if they messaged me for the address. So that does put some responsibility back in my court that I have to be aware that they're coming and I need to um, be available to get their message and send the address to them. But I don't usually have a problem with that. I mean, I know everybody's different. Everybody's different with like their work schedule and like how much they can handle and their bandwidth and all of that. I don't usually have a problem with it. And if you do have a problem with it, I recommend setting a timer. Um, I mean, not a timer, setting an alarm on your phone. Like if you know that you're going to have to be available to take somebody's message between 3.30 and 4, then set an alarm on your phone for 3.30 to remind you, hey, I need to be on the lookout for this. Okay, so let's say best case scenario, this person is supposed to come at four o'clock. They message me at 345 and they say, hey, I'm about to pull out of my driveway. Can I have your address, please? I send them the, I send them the address. Um, I usually do porch pickup, so I will tell them very specifically, hey, look for the such and such color vehicle um, on the carport. Your item will be on the chair next to the back door. And sometimes I will put the item in place and take a picture and send them the picture so they know exactly what they're looking for. Um, it just kind of depends on what it is or if I have multiple people picking up and different stuff like that. Okay, so that is the best case scenario. Let's talk about some variations on this. First of all, let's say um, this person did not message me before four o'clock to get my address. Let's say 30 rolls around and they still haven't messaged me so what I will do is say I will send them a message reply you know back on our like conversation thread in private messages and say hey I haven't heard from you I'm going to go ahead and move on to somebody else so this is part of the reason why um, when I first post the item and I do I go in the comments section and I say, message me, message me, message me, message me. So hopefully someone else has messaged me and maybe they said, hey, I would really like to get this sweater from you, but I can't pick it up until tomorrow at 7 p.m. or something like that. So I can message that person and say, hey, the person who was supposed to pick up today fell through. Are you still available to come at seven tomorrow? Um, I will like, you know, give them a few minutes to respond. And then I might go back into the comment section and say something like still available, da da da. And like, or, you know, give other people a chance to message me. Um, so then this way, if that person that said they were going to be there at four o'clock does not show up at four o'clock, then 
I can very easily move on and give the item to somebody else. It's not this ambiguous thing like, oh, I'll be there tonight. Like, what is tonight? You know, anytime between five and midnight, you know, and then you're just like waiting to see if they show up and a whole day goes by before you need to like start this process all over again. Um, or they say, I'll be there in the morning. I mean, what is that? That, that? that means nothing to me. Like I need a very specific time that if this person does not show up at this time that they that we agreed on together because it worked for both of our schedules, I'm moving on and finding like the next person who's going to be able to come, you know, within whatever time frame that I want that works for both of our schedules. And then importantly, that person that I said, sure, you can come get this at four o'clock. They do not have my address. They are not gonna come banging on my door at 10 o'clock at night, mad saying, hey, you said I could have this and then you gave it to somebody else. You can avoid that situation <laughs> entirely. Um, now, let's talk about if you are picking up an item from someone, they've given you a gift and you are scheduling to go pick it up from them. Um, once again, I suggest setting a very firm time. Now it's a little bit harder um, because the ball is kind of more in their court, but you know, talk about it with them. Say, I would like to come at five o'clock today. Does that work for you? If they answer back and they say, yes, five o'clock is good, then that is a commitment and a promise from that person that they are going to have that item from you for you at five o'clock. If they find someone who can come earlier and they didn't communicate that to you, they didn't tell you, then, you know, in that instance, they might receive within our buy nothing group, they might receive a strike because once you give the time, that is like the commitment to, yes, I'm gonna have this for you. So if that, if the gifter says something like, sure, you can come at five o'clock, but if I find someone who can come before that, I'm going to give it away, so message me then that's a whole nother scenario that is leaving them open for having the option if somebody can come sooner than you, um, that they still have like the right to give it away. But if they don't include that information and they tell you, yes, five o'clock works, you know, come at five o'clock to get it. And then you get there and you're like, and they say, oh, well, somebody else said they could come for 12 and I gave it to them instead then they're in violation of our particular buy nothing group rules. So I actually wanted to make this video for the people in my buy nothing group because we've had some problems lately and um, you know, people message me or they say things in the comments and I just keep reiterating over and over again, set a time, set a time, set a time. We do have um, a three strike policy in our by nothing group where, I mean, we have lots of rules that can result in a strike if you violate the rule, but one of the rules is um, no showing for picking up a item. Um, so what was I saying? Um, but yeah, okay. So if there's no set time, it's very, very hard for me to actually go through with giving that person the strike and the suspension. So our three strike policy is um, first strike is a seven day suspension, second strike is a 28 day suspension, and third strike is removal from the group. And we do this because we don't want people in the group who just continuously violate the rules or we don't want people in the group who um, continuously pull no-shows because what happens 
when that happens is people in the group who are actually gifting, they get discouraged and they don't want to gift anymore. So we have this policy in place so that we can have like high quality members in the group who have integrity, who want to have a sense of community, who know how to follow simple sets of instructions, which is like a really big thing in my mind. Um, so yeah, I really wanted to make this video um, for my group and tell everybody you have to set a time. Um, I'm kind of getting to the point where if a time was not set, I don't really want to issue the strike or the suspension because it's like, um, so in order for us to go through with the suspension, we need documentation. So people will send screenshots of like their conversations um, between themselves and like the person who was supposed to pick up for them or whatever person they're reporting within the group. So if someone says, if someone sends in pictures from the conversation and they're like, oh, um, yeah, I can pick up tomorrow, da, 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 da. Um, it's just, it's very ambiguous and you have to kind of like read between the lines. Whereas if someone says, hey, I can pick up for two o'clock and they don't show up at two o'clock, I, I automatically know that, okay, they didn't do what they said they were going to do. But if they said, hey, I'm going to pick up tomorrow and oh, can I push that back to this and da da da, and there's no firm set time, then I have to like very in depth read the whole entire conversation, not only read the conversation, but read between the lines of what the people might have meant by what they were saying and try to gauge like, okay, maybe this person was really trying to say, hey, I don't actually want to come pick up because they didn't know how far it was going to be or something, or they just changed their mind, but you know, they didn't feel comfortable saying that. Um, then it just becomes like this very big gray area where Oh, my baby girl is hot. It just becomes this very big gray area where um, it, it can be draining, honestly. And I don't really have the time at this point to decipher these things. So if there's not a firm set time, then I don't know, people might not be getting suspended. I don't, I'm not really sure how I'm gonna handle this going forward or or what actually is gonna take place. But um, so yeah, I wanted to share my method. I've, I've shared it with people before um, in messages and things like that, but I thought maybe making a video would be good. Oh my God, we're at 28 minutes. Do you have 28 minutes for me to explain to you how I handle my pickups. So let me see if I can make it like really short. Okay. So when I make my post, when I make my original post, I include a nearby landmark so they can see what area I'm in. They'll know how far I am from them and if they want to make the trip, how long it's going to take, distance, etc. Um, then when people comment, I will tell a handful of people who I feel like they are pretty good at following instructions um, to message me. So based off of the messages that I receive, um, I will choose someone to message back and say, hey, I'll be available between this time. And then I ask them when they would like to come. I let them choose the time that they would like to come because I feel like it's usually an actual um, realistic option for them if they're saying what the time is. So I let them tell me what time they come. If it works for my schedule, I'll say, okay, that's great. Message me between that time and 30 minutes before for my address so you can come pick up. 
So we have a firm time set. I have not given them my address. I told them, message, my, message me when you are about to be on the way to come pick up. And if they actually message me, then I give them the address. I tell them where the item will be. I might take a picture of it for them and send it to them so they know just exactly what they're looking for. Um, and then if our set time comes and goes, I will message them back and say, hey, I haven't heard from you. I'm going on to somebody else. And then because I told a few people to message me um, early on, then I can go back, see if anyone else messaged me and said, hey, this item is still available. Would you like to come between such and such time and just start the process over again? So, you know, once two o'clock rolls around or four o'clock or whatever time it was that I said, okay, be here. If they are not there at that time, then I can move on and find somebody else to see if they'll come pick up. Um, so that's basically it. We'll see how this video turned out. Um, and I hope this helps. And I really hope that people in our local group watch this video and set times because it's going to help everyone, especially you, especially if you really want these items that you've decluttered to get out of your house so that you can enjoy a more simple and clutter-free and peaceful environment. So I'll be back with another one soon, you guys. And if you need any more decluttering or minimizing tips, visit my, fa uh, my Facebook page, 49 Things Minimalism and Decluttering. I am offering in-person services as well as virtual online decluttering sessions. Okay, see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye.